Lizella, Lizella, come and shine my flames tonight. Hallelujah! The Lord is good. Oh, come on, what's the Lord? The Lord is good, and all the time, blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah! Look at your brother tonight and say, Brother, come on, too. Look at your brother tonight and say, My guy, ah, come on out to my guy. You, you are at the right place at the right time. Find another one. Find another one and say, my guy, my guy, you are at the right place <laughs> at the right time. Come on, hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Let's give God a hand of praise together. Hallelujah. Thank you very much, worshipers, for just leading us in worship in the name of the Lord. Let's appreciate the message. Tonight. In the name of the Lord. Before, before we sit, just want to take this time just to want to appreciate everybody that has come tonight. Um, if you're coming here for the first time, Mr. Reds, our CEO of all has already welcomed you. Thank you very much for coming in the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Uh, and these the guys that are here tonight as well. I want to welcome a brother in law. Uh, he's the latest addition in the family. Um, he's my brother-in-law. Thank you very much for coming, bro. Hallelujah. We also want to welcome all the gents from Mount Horeb Christian Center in Soweto under the bishop. Hallelujah. The guys from Mount Horeb, can you just wave your hands? Bless, come on, let's appreciate them. God bless you. God bless you. Thank you very much for coming. The bishop told me that he's got ministry in Venda, but the men are coming. And thank you very much. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. We also want to appreciate the gents from uh, um, um, the capital city of South Africa, Pretoria, uh, down in the east, right here in Equestria. Um, um, they've got all the wisdom, but with no money, with no gold. Um, and we're going to probably just donate some gold before they leave here. Uh, can I get all the gents from Pretoria East? Wave your hands. Come on, we appreciate you. In the name of Jesus Christ, hallelujah. We appreciate all the gents from here at home, Calvary Christian Church in, in Johannesburg, Mabone. Hallelujah. This is our men up gathering. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Amen. The Lord spoke to us that we as men, it's our season, it's our time, that we need to rise up and men up. Hallelujah. And take the bull by the horns. We are tired. Enough is enough. We need to make sure that we change the narrative. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Um, I don't want to um, um, just uh, make this meeting to be too serious. Uh, I, both our guest speakers are here uh, tonight. Uh, I'm just going to take the first 45 minutes uh, and, and then the next speaker is going to come for the next 45 minutes. The next speaker is going to come for the next 45 minutes and then we're going to break into questions and answers. Hallelujah. I don't know, maybe some of you were born in church and you did church all your life. Some of us were born in church but we didn't do church. Church just found us. Jesus found us along the way. Yeah. So back in the days, while we were still in the world, Weekend used to start on Thursday. Friday, actually, we don't even sleep at home. 
uh, uh, we, are, we are out. I was telling them at church some Sundays that when, 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 when the club closes uh, at 2 o'clock in the morning, clubs usually close at 2 o'clock in the morning, we're actually looking for another one that's open to see which one is open so that we don't go and sleep. Um, so, uh, so tonight we have come to our own club. Uh, so we're going to do what we have to do. Whether we go home in the morning, those that we left at home, they must sleep by themselves. And, and, and they'll be fine. Hallelujah. In our midst, we don't only have married men, but we're also very intentional about investing in our young men. Hallelujah. Prevention is better than cure. So we want them to hear this thing fresh uh, so that they don't repeat the same mistakes that we did and they know how to uh, maneuver this road as they grow up. And we welcome all the young people in this place in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Pastor TJ is in the house. He's one of our speakers. And he's going to uh, come and speak to us. A very, uh, he's, a, he's a man ordained for us. Um, I hardly can ever do anything. And I don't have him here. Uh, when he's here, my heart sits in the right place. Hallelujah. Even when we're singing, we're just waiting for the man of God to arrive. Hallelujah. Um, and, and, and we've got our newest addition in the family. He's a, he's, a new, he's a new addition to this family, but me and him have been in, in talks for a long time. Uh, and he's one of our speakers tonight, uh, Mr. Katu Maestro, uh, in the name of his. He's, he's going to speak to us tonight in the name of Jesus. And uh, thank you very much for coming. He was telling me today, to, this is like my third engagement to speak in this just in one day and and thank you very much for squeezing us in and i know we've been talking about this time so for the past two years we've been talking about it, that it needs to happen and tonight it has happened blessed be the name of the lord hallelujah we may take our seats in the name of jesus christ and uh, uh, <clears throat> i try by all means to uh, to be a teacher of the word and teach the word of god but uh, by calling uh, I'm a preacher of the word, so I, I really try to slow down and teach the word. Uh, actually, I always tell the church, if you want to see me teach, just come on Wednesdays, uh, and we will teach the word. But um, tonight, I will lay the foundation, uh, and somebody will come and put the, the bricks, and somebody will come and do the finishings, and then we're going to be completed with this house in the name of the Lord. Somebody shout, Amen. Hallelujah. And um, I believe that the Lord is going to be great to us uh, tonight um, in the name of Jesus Christ. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Amen. Um, tonight, I would, for the first segment, I would really want us to engage um, on this talk. And um, uh, for biblical reference, we're going to take it from uh, the book of the beginnings. Um, Genesis. Let's take it from Genesis chapter 3. Um, and you can read it from verse 1, but for the sake of time, um, I will pick it up from verse number 6 um, tonight. And then we're also going to read 1 Corinthians chapter 11 and uh, verse number uh, 3 in the New King James Version. If you found it, shout Amen. I shout amen. Genesis chapter 3, if you see people standing, just stand with them. It's our culture in this church to stand for the reading of the word of God. And then after we read, you can sit down. If you choose to stand as I talk, I did not ask you to stand. Hallelujah. So when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, it was pleasant to the eyes. And a tree desirable to make one wise. She took its fruit and ate. She also gave to her husband uh, uh, with her and he ate. Somebody shout and say he ate. he ate. Then the eyes of both of them were opened and they knew that they were naked. And they sued fig trees, I mean fig leaves together and made themselves Coverings, and they heard 
and, and they heard the sound of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord and among the trees of the garden. Then the Lord God called to Adam and said to him, where are you? Come on, let's speak together and say, where are you? Uh, come on, one more time, shout and say, where are you? So he said, I heard your voice in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked, and I hid myself. And he said, who told you that you were naked? Have you, e have you eaten from the tree which I have commanded you that you should not eat? Then the man said, the woman whom you gave to be with me, she gave me of the tree. And I ate. Verse 13. And the Lord said, and the Lord God said to the woman, what is, what, what is this you have done? The woman said, the serpent deceived me. And I ate. The woman you gave to be with me, she gave me. And I ate. The serpent deceived me. And I ate. The woman you gave to be with me, gave me the fruit, and I ate. And the serpent deceived me, and I ate. What is it that we are eating out of deception? And we continue to eat, but we don't want to take accountability for it. We continue to eat it because we have been given. First Corinthians chapter 11 and verse number 3. First Corinthians chapter number 11 and verse number 3. Most of the time we read this, it's in premarital counseling when we, people are getting ready for marriage. But allow me just to ponder on it tonight. The Bible says, but I want you to know that the head of a man is Christ. And the head of a woman is a man. And the head of Christ is God. The head of a, a, the head of a man is Christ. The head of a woman is a man. And the head of Christ is God. Spirit of the living God, anoint my lips of clay. As we speak tonight, we speak that which you have spoken. I pray that, O oh God, you speak through my mouth and reason through my mind. In the name of Jesus, for thine is your kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. We bless you. And let the church shout and say, Amen. Amen. You may take your seat, guys, in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. My subject for tonight will not really be an exciting subject, uh, but will be probably a thought-provoking subject that I really want us to ponder on it. Maybe before I kickstart, um, the, the, there will be a, a screen that will show right there with a QR code. Um, if, if your phone is able to scan the QR code, uh, please scan the QR code. Uh, it will lead you to a website. And uh, uh, when you get into that website, anonymously, you are able to ask a question, right? So as, as the service is continuing, you can scan the QR code and then you can be able to ask questions. And then when we go to our questions and answers session, uh, we will be able to get into those questions. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Right. Uh, tonight, allow me to speak under a subject that says out of order. Out of order. Yeah, we are no longer in order. We are out of order. Shake your brother and say, brother, we are out of order. Come on, shake your brother and say, brother, we are out of order. Yeah, you will remember Genesis 1 and 26. The Bible says, let us create men in our own image. I love an interactive church. Let us create men in our own image in our own image. And I want you to understand, the Bible says, and he created them, male and female. Hallelujah. But, but, but I want you to understand this, that when God was speaking to uh, 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 God the Son and God the Holy Spirit, 
and the Trinity got together to say, let us create men in our own image. You must understand that the creation was to create one human being who contains another human being. Are you with me? It was to create a human being who contains another human being. You, you, you might not have a womb, but inside of you, there was another human being who was ready, waiting, already waiting to be taken out. Somebody shout amen. Somebody shout amen. That was the God order. So God says, let us create man in our own image, in our own likeness. Therefore, you must understand that when God was creating man, he says, this man, let us give him dominion. Somebody shout and say dominion. Oh, come on, talk, talk to me and say dominion. And says, let, let us give this man. And, and tonight, I don't want to speak about them. I want to speak about the man. He says, let us give this man. He must be given dominion. He does not need to graduate for the dominion. He does not need to study for the dominion. We must give him dominion even before formation. We must give him dominion even before he has a car. We must give him dominion before he has money. We must give him dominion even before he can release a sperm. This is the dominion that has been ordained on him. Are you with me tonight? The Lord says, let us give this man dominion. What is this dominion? He says, this man must have dominion over everything. Over the fish in the sea. Over everything that creeps on the earth, over the birds in the sky, the man must have dominion. Oh, come on. Hallelujah. Oh, come on, church. Hallelujah. The man must have dominion over everything. This man must have dominion. Therefore, Jesus, is, it's like God was saying, we are releasing our authority on earth to this man. Therefore, which means that everything on earth has been put under the care of this man. Not only that, God continues and he goes and plants a garden called the Garden of Eden. Because he needed a place where he must place the man. After he formed the man, he created the man. The man did not just find himself coincidentally somewhere. The man was placed in the garden of Eden. Shake your name as a neighbor. You were placed in the garden. Ah, Kuruman my daughter. Say you were placed in the garden. This man was placed in the garden of Eden. He did not just haphazardly find himself there. God placed him there. Not only that. After placing him there, God says, you've got authority over everything. Not only that, God gave him instruction because God will never put you in a place without attaching an instruction of the conduct of the place. Every position that God puts you in, there is always a conduct attached to it of how you must behave. What are the do's and don'ts of where you have been placed. Oh, are you with me tonight, man? And the Bible says, God tells Adam, he says to Adam, I want you to work the garden. Tilt the garden. Take care of this garden. But also part of your responsibility is that in the garden, there are also animals. Please name the animals. I did the creation. Oh my God, Lord. You must do the naming. And Adam ask and say, Lord, how, how will I name the animals? God says, I've given you dominion to name it. Can I talk to a brother tonight? Anything that you name, it comes to pass. Anything that you speak, it comes to pass. Because there's a God-given dominion over your life. You can name any storm and say, this storm is my promotion. And say, this storm is not a problem, but it's a challenge. And they say, are you crazy? And you say, no, 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 no. I'm just attached to who I am. I have been given dominion. To 
listen to me. The lion never had a name. It was the dominion of a man that gave the name to a lion. And after 2,000 years, 3,000 years, it's called a lion because a man rose up and named, oh, can I talk to a man tonight? You can change your generation. You can change your narrative and begin to name things differently for your generation and say, my generation will never be poor. My generation will never be withdrawers. My generation will never be cowards. I'm beginning to name victorious. I'm beginning to name more than a conqueror. I'm beginning to name we are the head and not the tail. And they ask you, is this the anointing? No. Is this the Holy Spirit? No. It's my God-given dominion. Don't be fooled by the world. You have been given dominion. Don't be fooled by the society. You have been given dominion. Don't be fooled by circumstances. I don't care what the law of the world says. I don't care what the law of South Africa says. But I've come to talk to the men tonight. You have dominion to name anything. Bob says, you can name the animals. And, 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 and remember, Adam continues to name the animals. While he was naming the animals, the Bible says that amongst the animals, there was no one suitable for Adam. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. After to just first track the long story, the Bible says, God realized that Adam had dominion, but he was lonely. And God put him to sleep in the garden. God did not create again. He just put Adam to sleep. Because inside Adam, Eve was already there. Eve was already packaged. And the Bible says, out of the rib of Adam, Eve was formed. Eve was not created. Eve was formed from the rib of Adam. Hallelujah, somebody. Hallelujah, somebody. Therefore, I, 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 want, I, want, you, I want you to move with me tonight. Therefore, if, if <laughs> Adam was created by who? By God. Eve was formed from Adam. Which means Adam came from God. Eve came from Adam. Therefore, which means <laughs> the source of Adam because he came from okay. Therefore, if Adam came from God and he, his source is God, therefore, who is the source of Eve? You're with me, right? Because Eve came from who? Which means according to order, Eve feeds from Adam. Eve is taken care of by Adam. Eve hears from Adam. Listen to me, church. God does not speak to Eve. Because God does not know Eve. God speaks to that which he created. And Adam must pass the information to that which came out of him. Because, oh my God, here is the connection. Eve is connected to Adam. Adam is connected to God. That's the flow of information. Therefore, when God speaks, he does not bypass the protocol of information. He speaks to that which he created. Or oh, somebody shout and say, order. Oh, come on, shout. Chance and say, order. Somebody shout and say, order. Now watch this, watch this, watch this. Therefore, Adam, you have a responsibility to take care of that which came from you. Whether it has money more than you. Whether it drives bigger than you. This is, has nothing to do with possessions. It has everything to do with order. And the Lord said to me, we are out of order. Because man has put himself under pressure. Because he wants his playing catch up with that which came from him. Man is under pressure. 
He's trying to equal himself with that which God said, can I talk to the men tonight? There is no 50-50 here. There is order. Oh, somebody shall say order. Somebody shall say order. And we are out of order because we have disconnected to the dominion and we are after the things that the dominion can do. You with me, right? I'm going to close just now. And Genesis 3. Hey, Adam, you've got dominion over, every, over everything. Everything means everything. Everything. Now, Adam was busy with his own things. And a serpent shows up. The question must be asked, why does the serpent speak to the woman? The Lord said to me, the serpent was all out to cause a disorder. Because, listen to me, child of God, the serpent could not talk to the man because the man is the holder of the information. Okay, let me put it this way. The man is the receiver of the order. Therefore, the serpent knows if I approach the man, the man will release the order. Oh, come on, come on, come on. If I approach the man, the man will not entertain me. The man will release the altar. The man will not play with me. The man will release the altar. You see, when the sheriff shows up at your house, the sheriff says, good morning. You say, who are you? The sheriff rece- re- takes out the order. They don't care who you are. If, God, if, if they've got a warrant of arrest, it's an order. If, God, if they've got a warrant of repossession, it's an order. They are coming to, they don't negotiate because it's an order. Where there is no order, there's too much negotiations. Where there's no order, conversation starts. And Satan comes in. Because that which Adam is supposed to take care of was exposed. That which Adam is supposed to protect was left vulnerable. That which Adam is supposed to defend was left open. The door was open. And the, 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 the serpent came and said, Did God really say? What did God and Clegg say? But because she did not receive the order, she makes up her own stories. She mumbles because order was not given to her. I need to talk tonight to those that have been given order, but they have repositioned themselves out of order with the order that God gave them. And the families is left exposed. The families is left to the serpent. The serpent is coming into the family setup because the holders of the order have removed themselves from the order. And God says, I've got no one else to talk to. I can't talk to the one that came out of you. I need the one that I created because he has the order. He knows how to defend. He's got the dominion. He knows how to protect. He knows how to provide. I gave him dominion. He's got that order. And the Lord said to me, the man in 2024, the man is sleeping. The man is into depression. The man is drinking. But the man is drinking with the order. The man is womanizing. The man is hustling with the order. While you are hustling, the serpent... It's causing disorder. While you're trying to be rich, the serpent is causing disorder. While we are running after cars, the serpent is causing disorder. And who must defend for the order? The one who received the order. I'm here to talk to you as a man. You've got a charge to protect the order. You've got a charge to defend the order. You've got a charge to defend the family setup because you've got the order. Pop says, the serpent begins to speak to the woman. I'm going to close just now. Watch this. 
the woman saw that the tree was good for food. But the order was not there. The fruit was good for food, but it was out of disorder. I mean, it was out of order. The Bible said it was pleasant to the eyes. Watch this, watch this, verse 7. <laughs> no, verse 6. The Bible says, she took the fruit and she ate. Shake your neighbor's neighbor, she ate the fruit. The Bible says, she ate the fruit. After eating the fruit, watch, I want you to recognize this order here. Let me take you back here. Adam, you feed from Christ because you came from Christ and you feed and she feeds from you. The Bible says she took the fruit. She ate herself. After she took the fruit, the Bible says she took another fruit and she feed the man. While the man is supposed to feed her, she fed the man. The Lord said to me, the moment the man ate, disorder was caused. The moment the man ate, repositioned happened. The moment the man ate, power was lost. The moment the man ate, respect was lost. The moment the man ate, that's why the Bible said, listen, watch the Bible, watch the Bible. She ate, nothing happened. Nothing happened when she ate. But the moment the order ate, the moment the receiver of the order ate, the Bible says their eyes were opened and they realized that they were naked. But when Eve ate, their eyes were not opened because the serpent was not after Eve. The serpent was going via Eve to the order to cause a disorder. And the man opened up the mouth. And he ate. And there was disorder. There was disorder. The order began to be broken. When the man was fed by the woman. The order was broken. When the man started playing catch up with the woman. The order was broken when the man was removed out of position, yet he was still in the location. He was still in the Garden of Eden, but he did not have power anymore. He was still in the Garden of Eden, but he was naked. The nakedness shows the release of the power. There is no, it is the same narrative of when Jesus was touched by the woman with the issue of blood. The Bible says he stopped and he said, somebody touched me. And Peter says, how can you say somebody touched you? Because you've got so many people around you. He says, Henda, I'm not talking about an ordinary touch. Power left. And the Lord said, I must talk to the man. We grew up under powerless generation because the man in the beginning was fed by the woman. And God said, it's time that we must man up, rise up and restore order. Because according to my order, as a man, you are not fed by a woman. As a man, you don't eat from the hand of a woman. As a man, I, I'm here to talk to you tonight. God says, I'm here to speak to you so that you can feed the woman. Today, the man is feeding from the woman. The man is prayed over by a woman. The man is led by the woman. The man is spoken to by the woman. Our boy children, they can't even aspire for marriage. They want to have feelings for another man because Alta has left the family. Our girls I look at the man and they are scared of the abuse of the man. Our girls want to marry each other because they don't aspire for a man because the altar has left the family because the altar has departed from the family because we broke the order. And you, you say, no, no, no. It's the law of South Africa. It's not the law of South Africa. It is the perpetuation of disorder. And the law says, where is the church? 
I said, God, the church is here. And the Lord said to me, son, I'm not talking about the women. You've got too many women, but they don't have the altar. I need those that have got the altar so that I can speak to them. That's why when a woman goes to church, children follow. When a man goes to church, the whole family follows. Because order has been restored. We are raising a generation of men that are out of order. And that's why we said in the, tonight, it's my time that I must, I must rise up as a man and take my power back. The Lord said, I must tell you, your power is not in your masculinity. Your power is not in your clap. Your power is not in your fist. Your power is not in your height. They say, I love them dark and chocolate. Height long. I don't want, the Lord says, that's not your power. Your power, it's in your dominion. Today, men are washing hands in the air because they have disconnected from the dominion. Now they call us hustlers. We even go around, what's your hustle? And when we become hustlers, we are raising hustlers. I'm, I'm here to challenge your thought process. God says, that was not the order in the beginning. You were not supposed to hustle from the beginning. Because everything that you are hustling for was already provided for. Oh God. Men even work on Sunday. Men, prayers in the family, they are led by women. If your, if your son only has a relationship with your wife, what do you think is going to happen when he grows up? Because nothing, no man energy has spoken to him. Therefore, he says, I'm in touch with my femininity. What rubbish is that? Order. Our children spend too much time with our wives. And they hear the soprano all the time. Don't be surprised the moment you see him after your hustle. Because that's what he grew up seeing. Where is the order? If you have a son, when last did you sit down man to man and talk with your son the same way that God spoke to you? No, Bafunzi, he's still young. God spoke to Adam from the day one. It is, listen to me. We want to speak so that we can get response. It's not about response. It's about impartation. It's about doctrinating. Where is the order in the church? I used to, it's not everything that is bad with the mainland churches. I used to love it back in the days in the mainland churches. There was a section for women and a section for men. Men don't mix with women because they wanted to see how many orders are in the church. Now if you can be true to yourself, who dictates the terms in your house? You come and tell us when we're at the car wash, I'm running the family, but you know very well you're not running it. She runs everything. Who decided the sheets that you sleep on? Who decides the menu that you eat? Who decides what the kids must wear? When are you, you, you are not involved. And the devil has kept us busy so that we are disconnected from the order. And that is why yeah, it's coming. 16 days of, 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 of activism in protection of women and child. I told them, you won't fix it by campaigns. You must restore man to the order. You won't fix it by giving us t-shirts. You must bring man to the order. These days, you are, you are saying, people say, no, but the world is changing. We are evolving. You are seen as a very loving husband. When you change the nappies, 
when you do all these kind of things, you are seen as a loving husband. And that's what we teach as pastors. And I, I, I've got nothing against it. But listen to me and listen to me very well. Do all the chores in the house. When you finish doing the chores in the house, get back to your position. Therefore, you must understand there's a difference between roles and positions. The fact that you can play a certain role does not mean that it's your position. Because even a defender can score the goal, but yet they're not a striker. Don't now score the goal and you stay in the front because when you are in, your position is to defend. Somebody shout and say order. order. Somebody shout and say order. order. And here is the order here. And I sit down. The head of every man is Christ. The head of every man is who? I'm closing. And I want to ask you, who is your head? You come to church, Pastor TJ posted the other time, the come as you are. Must never end it, come as you are. When will you change? You abuse the grace of God. You drink on Saturday and you come to church on Sunday. Where is the head? Who is your head? And please, please don't be a drinker and expect to raise a CEO. Because the child will only do what he sees in the house. What order are you putting in the house? We change women like socks. And we, the children, I swear like this nowadays, children, they are dangerous. You, can, you can't lie to them. They know you better than you know yourself. And don't be surprised. You send them somewhere. You send them to boarding school. You send them to the cafe. When they come back, they've stolen the change. An apple doesn't fall far, far, far away from the tree. You take the shambok. Before you shambok the child, shambok yourself first. Because the disorder is with you. Come on, brother. Come on, brother. Look that side. Actually, look at me. Look at me. This is your order. You pass it on. You pass it on. Bring it back. My brother, go drink. Did you see what just happened? No, no, it's not vacant, pa, bro. He took the position of the man. Because the man is out of position. Even if he score goals, it's offside. Because he's out of position. Because there's, there's vacancy. The serpent steps in. Okay, better off the woman steps in. While you are there, you are replaced. And watch me, watch me. Because you are replaced, you must now use who you are physically to authenticate what you want to be. I'm your husband. Wow. No, but the problem is not her. The problem is that you came out of position. And don't be surprised. We are the one that is missing up the God of the, the order of God. Because God says, the head of a man is Christ. And the same man doesn't want to hear from Christ. Therefore, Christ has no choice but to speak to the one that is available. And don't be surprised. While you're always playing catch up all the time. You're always, decisions have been taken without you. You're always left behind. 
is because you are out of position. And that's why when he stepped into the Garden of Eden, he said, Adam, Adam, where are you? It's not that God didn't know where Adam was. No, God was coming back to position. God was coming back to order. He was not coming back to the garden. He was coming back to order. You can sit down. Shake your neighbor as a neighbor. Where is the order? I need to close. I need to close tonight. Christ feeds, speaks, and gives to the man. And the man feeds, speaks, and gives to the woman. And the woman feeds, speaks, and gives to the children. Where is the order? There will be no restoration of order while we are still out of order. Restoration of power will only happen when a man comes back to order. And how do we get back to order? Number one and very important, we must start by taking responsibility. Take responsibility. You can't be shifting all the time and you shift the blame all the time. You give responsibility all the time. You push away responsibility all the time. When will it be you? When will you stand up and say, it is me that has caused this thing. It is me that will fix this thing. It is me that is causing problems in this household. I will fix this thing because I need to regain my power back. And for us to get our power back, man, we need to start by taking responsibility. And watch, power was lost here. God shows up, says to Adam, Adam, did you not eat the fruit that I said you must not eat? What did Adam say? Adam says, no, 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 God, God, God. Huh? I did not eat the woman you gave me. She is the one that gave me. And I ate. Stop acting like a follower. Be a leader. Why do you compromise your leadership to please the followers? Why do you compromise your leadership to be accepted? Why do you compromise your leadership so that you can be called? No, I'm, I'm, you, you, are, you are the new age man. Don't you know that you've been given the order? When she gave you, order should have been produced. But I don't, I don't want to hurt my wife in the expense of the order. No, I don't want to hurt my... No, no, she's, 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 my, she's my foundation. Rubbish. The order. The Bible says he ate. Watch this. After he ate, God... God goes to the woman. Eh? Why? Because Adam spoke about who? The woman. Now, when he spoke, to the, when he spoke about the woman, the, the Bible says, when he spoke to the woman, the woman says, what have you done? The woman, watch what the woman does. Because the woman also doesn't have order. She must copy from the one who has order. The woman says, God, as just like what Adam says, it's not me. The serpent deceived me. Power left from the man to the woman, from the woman to the serpent. From there, the story ended. That's why the serpent still has power even today. Because no man wanted to take responsibility. And that's why the devil has power over your family. The devil has power over your feelings. The devil has power over... No, no, it's the devil. He was, that power was supposed to be taken away from him. But that power, God could not take it. You should have taken it by taking responsibility. And the family, it's in disorder. Because we don't want to take responsibility as men. Lastly, restoration of order will not happen until the man stops hiding.
The man must come in hiding. Come out of hiding. Our church on Sunday, it's full. All the sections, they're full. Men sit at the back. I watch it sometimes when I'm standing here. Men don't want to be ushered to the front. Because men, everywhere where it contains order, men must always be in hiding. But everywhere where it contains money, men must always be in the forefront. Watch. You always show up for everything that concerns this world. But you don't show up for everything that concerns your creator. Because in the matters concerning your creator, you are always in hiding. And it's there in the Bible. The Bible says, when the eyes were opened, they went and cut some leaves, thick, thick, thick leaves. They sewed coverings for themselves. As if the coverings were not enough. The Bible says, they went and hid themselves. And God came. And Adam says, no, we are hiding because we are naked. We are hiding. We heard your voice. We had to hide. We heard your voice because we don't want to talk to you. We are naked. We had to hide. We are hiding behind this pain. We are hiding behind this, uh, uh, this troubles, these mistakes. We are hiding behind society. We are hiding behind the heads. We are hiding. But we are in hiding. And the Lord said to me, you are hiding obedience with the order. And that's why we are out of order. And look at the picture that we're using tonight. Now you want to kill yourself. Everything that is not even right looks right to you because you're out of order. Let me tell you something. Even if you drink, you wake up in the morning, the alcohol will disappear. That problem, you still need to face it. You are just out of order. I close by this. As a man, I will tell you the truth today. You are nothing without Christ. Women can survive without Christ. Hear me. According to order. You are a lost Canaan without Christ. Because your submission to Christ is what gives authenticity to your leadership. As a young man, you need to make a conscious decision to say, I always need to remain in the order. And your order is to be in Christ. Amen. What baton are you passing to your children? You can pass the cars, everything, they will squander it. But if you pass Christ, they will take care of the matters of this world. We are too busy. My time is gone. We are so busy doing a lot of things except Christ. And I can tell you right now, the Lord told me, says the man must come back to Christ. And that's why he sent the rain. Sin still happened. He did everything until he sent a man to come and die. Because these things, these matters need a man. You can show up with everything. But without Christ, you are nothing. Watch. Watch, guys. When they advertise cars, there always needs to be a half-naked woman next to the car. And if, when they advertise drinks, there always needs to be a half-naked woman. Why? Because it's to make sure that as a man, I must always stay out of order. And that's why you have every reason to stay away from Christ. Every reason that is so sound to stay away from Christ. Because the devil wants to make sure he will leave you living. Doing everything as long as you're not in Christ. It's fine. Because he knows the moment you get connected back to order, he's in trouble. 
And I'm here to challenge the men tonight. It's time that we must take back our power and restore order in the family. Restore order in the community. Restore order in the church. Restore order in our country. Restore order in our workplace. Restore order in our businesses. Why? Because I've taken back my power. And people begin to ask, what happened to you? Nothing happened. I have just come back to my basics. And what is your basics? I close. The head of a man is Christ. The head of a man is Christ. And the head of a woman is a man who is headed by Christ. And the head of Christ is God. God speaks to Christ. Christ speaks to the man. The man speaks to the woman. That's why these days you speak and they say speak to the hand. Because they've realized you are a man who is not headed by anybody. You are actually headed by that woman. You are headed by your aunt. You are headed by your cousin. You are headed by this and that and that. You are headed by your money. You are, but you are not headed by Christ. Listen to me. She will not submit to you until you are submitted to Christ. You, that's why I posted, I think some few years ago, I said there's submission and there's toxic submission. And real submission happens to men that have submitted to Christ. It is not a must that she must submit. No, she submits to what you submit to. And I'm here to challenge you. The power is in Christ. It's not in the dollar. It's in Christ. If you want to take back your power, get back to position. Let's rise up on our feet. Your power is in Christ. Your, your power is in Christ. Your power is to be in Christ. You need to come back to Christ. You need to be restored to Christ. The devil keeps on doing certain things and removes you out. It's because everything is about the power. It's about the power. It's about the power. He wants to take away your power. As long as you are in Christ, it's fine. You can have the money. You can have everything. You can get married. As long as you're not in Christ. You can be in church. As long as you're not in Christ. And I'm here to challenge you, gents. Your power is found in Christ. What then shall it profit a man to gain the whole world? That's why each Mizago, they even come to your house. Because they are agents of the enemy sent to make sure that you are not in Christ. God is calling you to be restored back to power. Your power is in Christ. Your power is in Christ. Your power is in Christ. As a man, your power is in Christ. Do we want to change this world? Get back to Christ. You want to change your status? Get back to Christ. If you, look, if you read the book of Luke, chapter 15, they give a parable of a prodigal son. He got all the money. His inheritance, everything he feared. He became the talk of the town. He squandered everything. Everything. Finished everything until he was reduced into a status of eating with the pigs. While he was eating with the pigs, the Bible says, he came back to his senses. And he said, my father has got many hired servants. And I'm a son. And I'm eating with the pigs. He says, I will arise and go back to my father. And say, father, I have sinned before you. And God, I'm no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me. I took the money I made myself. But father, I'm coming back. Make me one of your servants. I'm no longer worthy. The son realized that money had no power. Power was where he came from. 
And maybe you are here tonight. Just like that prodigal son. You can make a decision tonight and say, I'm rising. I will go back to my father so that I get back my power. Your power is in Christ. Your dominion is in Christ. Your power is in Christ. Your favor is in Christ. Everything that you need is in Christ. You need to come back to Christ. You need to come back to Christ. The Bible says when the prodigal son came back, they put a new garment on him. They put a new ring on him. They killed the fetters. There was a party. Why? Because power was being restored. Order was being restored. Let's close our eyes tonight. I want to pray with you tonight. If you want to restore your power as a man, I want to pray with you tonight. If you want to get back to Christ tonight, I want to pray with you tonight. We can do all the psychological terms, but let me tell you something. The bad stops with Christ. Your power is in Christ. Your power is in Christ. Oh, he who, pro he who does not prosper is the one that moves with an unconfessed sin. You see, that sin is nice. It's looking so good. As long as it's not confessed, it's taking away your power. It's limiting your power. It's limiting your operation. Get back to power. Get back to Christ. Get back to Christ. If you are here tonight, it's just, it's just us guys tonight. If you are here tonight, and you say, I need, I need to get back to Christ. I need to, I, I want to I wanna get back my power. I want to get back my power. There's this that has been making me to hide. There's this that has been <laughs> marginalizing me, neutralizing me. I'm not operating to my full potential. And tonight I'm cutting the umbilical cord. I'm coming back to my senses. I'm getting back my power. If you are here tonight, you can lift up your hand. I'm going to pray with you right now. If you want to get back to Christ, it's just us brothers tonight. Please make your way to the front tonight. I'm going to pray with you tonight. Just make your way for, from wherever you are. Don't be scared. It's just us guys tonight. Oh, come on, gents. Clap your hands for Jesus. Brothers are getting back their power tonight. Oh, come on, church. Clap your hands for... Brothers are getting back their power tonight. Power needs to be restored. Power needs to be restored. When, you, when a man gets power, communities will be powerful. Churches will be powerful. Generations will be powerful. Ah, a man is to come back to order. Order has been restored tonight. Lift them hands to the Lord. Order has been restored tonight. Order has been restored tonight. Order has been restored tonight. Order has been restored over your life. As your hands are lifted up, I want you to begin to pray for yourself. I'm going to pray for you right now in the name of Jesus. As I'm praying for you, Pastor TJ will just move around and lay hands on you right now in the name of Jesus. Because you know, before we do the confession, you need an impartation. You need a restoration.